This show is being brought to you by Grandpa Ray Outdoors. John O'Brien is the CEO of Grandpa Ray Outdoors, and he's been an agronomist for over 29 years. He's not just an agronomist, he is an educator. So if you go to Grandpa Ray Outdoors on the web, you're going to see that John is sharing his knowledge with anybody that wants to listen and become a smarter food plotter. He does have a special group called Team Grow, and you can join that and get the inside scoop with John. He does private uh, seminars and shares private information. So check out Team Grow and Grandpa Ray Outdoors for the finest information on the web. Oh yes, he has a full line of seeds that are as good as, if not better than, any other seed company in existence today. Let's Talk Deer. Let's Talk Deer is supported and sponsored by Grandpa Ray Outdoors. We receive funds from Grandpa Ray Outdoors for airing this show. Thing has started. Welcome to another episode. And this is a really fun episode. I've been looking forward to this uh, for a long time. We're meeting with Conquest Scent owner, uh, Doug Roberts, out, out in Michigan, and we just did a Facebook Live. So go to Let's Talk Deer on, face, on Facebook, and you can see that right now. It's up. But anyway, Doug, welcome to the show. And I know with your busy schedule and very successful company in Conquest Scent, um, You've been busy, but here we are. We got her done, so let's get rolling. And folks, um, this is Mr. Doug Roberts, and he is the owner of Conquest Sense. And if you're not using Conquest Sense, you're shooting yourself in the foot. Because it's, as Doug and I talked earlier, if you don't have it in your toolbox, and I've tried, and I've people know who I am, folks, and they send me lots of stuff, and I've tried everybody's stuff. But in, in a couple of minutes, I'll share it. But Doug, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's good to be here finally. It's been about a year we've been trying to get this put together. <laughs> yeah, we sure have. But anyway, okay, let's give people the backstory of one, you're a deer breeder. It's not a high fence operation because you're going to tell people what you do with your three year olds, but you're a deer breeder that through, I'm just going to call it a blessing from God, something happened one day. And Conquest Scent was born. So have at it. Okay. Conquest Deer Farm, actually what I did was a breeding program that supplied other farms and, and hunting ranches with animals. Um, and I did this. Now, this is 29 years I've been doing this. I'm going actually into my 30th year. So it's really my longest full-time job. Um, but what has happened here is we have a genetic breeding program where we try to grow uh, real clean, typical whitetail bucks. And in that program, those bucks at three years old get sold to hunting ranches uh, here in Michigan. The does, once they're done being bred and we have fawns out of them, they get put into the scent collection program and they will live their entire life in that program. And, and like I told you earlier, we've had one that actually lived 21 years. We've had a number of them that have lived 18, 19 years. The average is really 11 to 15 years that they'll live their life out here on the farm. Uh, they're very well taken care of. And well, we they got li smells. they're living easy though. Come on. <laughs> I they're living very easy. There's no stress levels. Um it's like right now in the summer, they'll actually go into the facility for a day or two out of two weeks. So most of the time they're just laying outside eating, enjoying life, getting fat and happy. Um so it's it's fun to take care of them. There we do uh we make money off all parts of them. When we do have an animal that gets injured, we have to take it out. Uh, we sell a line of snack sticks on our website, and we ship them all over the country. Uh, they're they're very good, uh, and we only have them when we do have to call these animals out. So there's a process that all of these deer go through on the farm, and through all of this, Conquest Sense was created. Um, BS1 was the first thing through artificially inseminating. I kind of figured out the the secretions that the does made and how to collect that and how to put it together. And, and that really started Conquest Sense. And then Evercom came along, you know, and Evercom was one of those 
crazy. Uh, my worker and I had to run a bunch, 90 some deer through a, the, the facility and medicate and vaccinate. Um, we do it just like cattle. Um, and he held, physically held on to every one of those deer all day long and went out at the end of the day. He was kind of upset because he only had like 35 minutes before dark. It was too late. Um, he had told me he wanted to get out hunting that night, but work comes first. Well, he gets out there and not 20 minutes later, he calls me on his cell phone and he goes, man, I got deer everywhere. And I said, well, did you shoot one? Did you, are you okay? I mean, I'm kind of concerned because he was mad enough he wasn't going to call me. He goes, no, I've never seen so many deer. And he said, they just look at me, they lift their nose, they smell, and they can start chasing each other again. And without even thinking, I just said, well, you stink like a herd of deer. Holding on to them, they had their sweat, their spit, their pee, their poop. Everything on about a deer in all of those smells were on him but he had his work clothes on. He had diesel fuel on him. He had grease on those clothes. I mean, it overwhelmed. So what it told me was, is a deer's nose is by far the number one thing they trust. And if they smell fresh deer, even if they don't see them, they feel safe and they feel comfortable. And that's really why Evercom works so well as it is. And folks, here's a unpaid uh, testimonial. So last year I was hunting the farms in Wisconsin, hunted the same farm since 1966. Okay, I don't get on tree stands anymore. I'm on the ground. I have my honey hole has a has a um, an oak tree that has like a cubby hole. I can put my chair in there. I shoot off a cross post, so I have my shooting sticks. So uh, when I'm hidden, somewhat, and you know, I can shoot one direction. I can't pivot. So anyway, a buddy of mine who hunts it, I'm going to give you a shout out, Marv, Marv Shear, and he's been using Evercom for a long time, but he's very quiet. No, he's secretive. <laughs> About what he's doing. He's extremely successful. He's a great hunter. And so there you go, Marv. So anyway, I would notice near his tree stands, he'd have these marks, and they'd be kind of like deodorant. And I'm going, what the heck's that? I'd ask him, ah, uh, he never would tell me. <laughs> then I had another buddy who said, if you're not using the Evercom, Bruce, you're stupid. And I go, okay, okay, tell me why. Well, this is a little bit. I go, Really? So I ordered some stuff, I ordered some Evercom, and then I get the scent dispersal sticks. And if you're not using those, folks, you're really shooting yourself in the foot. So I'm sitting in my little cubby, and I hang 10 feet from me, downwind. I had this, I hang one on a vine. And I'm seeing deer, I always see deer in this thing, sometime during the day, and this is during the rut, so all day sits, blah, blah, blah. So the bucks come through, one comes through, and I didn't shoot him. He was a shooter, but I've killed enough deer that, you know, if he's not something special, I'm not going to shoot him. That's all. So anyway, I'm having a great time and blah, blah, blah. And it kind of gets quiet. Then all of a sudden I hear rustling, and I kind of look with my eyes. I don't turn because, one, I got that oak tree here. So I just kind of turn my with my eyes, and I go, dang, that's a buck. That was a young buck, an eight-pointer. But he's circling down. He comes from upwind, downwind, and then he hits a sink cone from the ever from the scent dispersal. And he beelines it almost to the where the the, the dispersal um, device is. It puts his nose up, and he's sniffing it. And I'm ten feet away from him. I'm going, holy fright! I wish I was filming. I don't film, folks. For a lot of reasons, I just don't film. Anyway, I'm going, holy, and he just hung around and just kind of did his thing, and and he walked away. Ten minutes later, from my left side, that was the right side, left side, I hear something, and I can't see nothing. And I'm sitting there, and I keep my eyes, and another buck came in and did exactly the same thing. Downwind, ten feet from it. I'm on the ground. so. That's all I can say, folks. <laughs> it A lot of that's happening for a lot of hunters. And what's interesting is Evercom, being that it's real and it's fresh, being in the wax formula, it stays fresh until it evaporates. And, and that's what's kind of nice about the wax formula. 
Um, but it's bringing out the more mature bucks earlier and getting more movement out of them because when they do smell it, they feel very safe and it's new deer. Deer are very curious if new deer come into their area. They, they're very family, or you know this, they're very family oriented. They know everybody in that area. So if you put somebody new in the area, everyone has to come and check out who the new guy is. Well, here's the catch. They never see him. They look around, they smell it, they know what they smell, they feel safe with what they smell, they feel comfortable, but I don't see them. So I'll just, I'll just hang around and wait till I can see them. It really increases your odds of seeing more deer more often and getting a better opportunity if you do choose to harvest one of those because we've had hunters call us and say, listen, they come in, they smell it, and they bed right down below us. How do we get out of our tree stand? I said, well, you got a problem. <laughs> I don't know, but that's how comfortable they can actually become. So uh, just by the grace of God, it's, you know, it was an accident. We literally figured it out. But when he had, he not called me ever called would have never happened. You know, when he called me and said, listen, I've stood up, I've sat down, I've turned around, I'm talking to you on the phone. The deer won't run away. They, sm they smell me and they go chasing each other because they're thinking that's that new deer. In reality, it was him. And yeah. so, uh, you know, but he was the deer. He was, he was the deer. He, he was the new deer in the area, absolutely. Yeah. And and because of that, they don't care what you look like as long as you smell right. So, right. So let's cool. talk about using decoys. Let's get tips and techniques. So oh, I got I ever that. come out. Now let's talk. So I've got not ten feet from me. I've got this hanging. And the deer are looking, and then thirty yards in front of me or in my kill zone. I usually put out either a doe or a buck, just depends on the time of year right. and, um, you know, what I have out there. So how should we set up? So I'm in a tree stand or ground blind or just on the ground like I hunt. Um, how should I set up my, my decoys? And when should I set them up? Well, it depends on what sense you want to use. So let me go through a couple scenarios. Evercom we use on the decoys all the time. And I don't care if it's a buck decoy or doe decoy, I always wipe it right where the white belly and the brown uh, color comes together on both sides. I wipe that whole strip on both sides. That gives that entire decoy a, a real smell, okay, of deer, just regular deer smells. Now, late October, just before the rut hits, we wanna start using that rutting buck on a buck decoy. Well, where does that smell normally come from on a buck? Parcel glands. That's literally where you want to put it because height matters to them. Wind currents matter to them. Everything, the more you can put it as realistic, the more real life that decoy becomes. And we want to take a piece of plastic and make it become a real entity to that, that buck. And, and that's very important. So it's ever calm on the sides, the running buck on the tarsal glands on both legs. And then I always set it where I can quarter it away from me because normally they're going to swing up from down below that buck, that decoy. Well, what's that give me? That gives me that perfect open quarter shot to that backside shoulder. So that's how I like doing it. Now, whether you want to do it, you know, facing left or facing right, that's personal preference. But I always like them kind of quartering away because it allows them to come in and give me that quartering away shot. Hmm. When it comes to a doe. And this is very critical. Just before the rut hits, all the bucks are ready to breed. They're wound right up to the max. Right. What people don't understand is the dominant doe in that area normally is the one that's supposed to come into heat first. She sets the stage for everybody because if she's a dominant doe, genetically she should be the superior one. She's going to get bred by the dominant buck. They produce the best offspring. Well, if you introduce VS1 on a doe decoy, again, ever come along the sides? VS1, right on the tail area, right where it should be. You're putting a new deer in there that's in heat prior to that dominant doe. She's going to have a fit about it. She isn't going to be very happy. She might blow. She might just stomp. She might. She's going to get angry. Everyone will be alert. Here's the catch. The bucks, they're looking for it. So if you can put up with the does being upset to some extent, the bucks will still react positively to that doe decoy. Now, once you get into the rut, that becomes more difficult because you're competing against every real deer in that area that's coming into heat. So that decoy, uh, if you can get movement to it, absolutely helps. 
Um, but that's the hardest time to use an ester ascent. Post rut, my favorite time. Doe decoy, post rut, the bucks are still looking to breed. All the real does have been bred in that area. Man, you got the whole thing to yourself. Same scenario, ever come on both sides of the doe decoy, BS1 on the back end. I like setting it up quarter and away, same thing. But now you don't have any competition. So all the bucks of all ages are looking to breed. There's only one there right out in front of you. So it actually becomes more effective post rut than during the rut. So those, those are my scenarios that I like setting up. I like using, um, you know, again, we, we do film a lot. I mean, we film, we did when we had the TV show going thousands of hours of film footage and, and we would, we'd get bucks that actually mount a plastic decoy, but it might be out of one out of a hundred. It might be right. one out of 200. Everyone thinks that's the scenario that always happens. No, that's the scenario we show because it's the coolest. The reality is most bucks will stop within five to 10 yards downwind behind it and they'll look and they'll survey it and you have to be able to shoot at that point, five to 10 yards behind that decoy, downwind, because they're gonna come in, they're gonna smell, okay, the smells are right, they're gonna look, but it's not moving, we're a little hesitant. Can you shoot that buck if you choose to? That's the setup you have to have. Yeah. Folks, I hope you're taking notes, because um, I learned a couple of things, because I usually have, I know where the deer typically, quote unquote, typically are supposed to come in. And so, and then I have certain scenarios, they have to kind of funnel into my decoy and it, it's a trap, but yeah. that's, I've hunted there so long, it's, it's a perfect trap and it'll give me, you know, a double long shot the way I have it set up. But I might, I might try this quarter in a way. I'm just trying, I'm running through my setup. I'm saying, how would, <laughs> how would I set that up? I'm going to have, yeah. what I'm going to have to do as I'm going to have to have that deer under 20 yards my decoy is going to be under 20 yards because okay. they'll come from my right, come from my left. And I only have a, a window because I get to, I'm sitting in this cubby. Right. And yep. so, and I don't want to move a whole heck of a lot because I'm on the ground. There, and so, every, every hunter is going to have to make their adjustments to the area yeah. they're hunting. Um, but what I, what people forget is they normally will put that decoy right there in that shooting opening. And that's the only opening. And the reality is the buck won't always come up to it. In fact, They're normally going the to. Buck... I, I can say almost yeah. 100% of the time, I've got exactly. enough hours in the woods, folks. They are not going to. They're going to survey. They're going to do all the things that you just said. They're going to look for body mechanisms or, you know, behavior yep. mechanisms in the deer. And if it doesn't look right, it's a DLR, folks. And if you don't know what DLR is, doesn't look right. Okay. <laughs> And if it doesn't look right, they ain't going to do it. But yep. they'll hang up, just as Doug said, five to ten yards. So downwind, so you have to change the position. We could go on for hours just on this one well, subject. The, I, I think the other thing that hunters have to understand, too, is a, a lot of them, it, I make it sound like you're just setting this out in the middle of a food plot. Well, let's understand how I'm those, in the woods. Right. But let's understand how does act during the rut. Bucks are very aggressive and they're very hard on them. They'll, they'll hook them, they'll horn them, they'll push them around. So anyone that's watched the rut cycle, the does always kind of stay in the thicker stuff. They want to run through this tighter brush because the bucks well, yeah. through, it slows the bucks down. So the last thing you want to do is literally just put this doe in heat, this doe that's in heat out in the middle of the food plot. I, I do like to run them along the edges of, of fields and woods where that one jump, they're, they're in safety. That's, that's real to that buck. But again, you have to get it where that buck is coming and be able to shoot five to 10. So don't put it out in the middle. Now, if you're in the woods, you have a little opening, that doe would feel safe there again because you can run through the woods and, and elude that buck. But don't put it right out in the middle of a food plot and expect that deer to walk out because that's not normal because as soon as that buck is within a certain distance, that doe would be running. And if she doesn't run, he's going to look and go, what's wrong with you? Especially the mature bucks. The young bucks, they're not smart. They're like little teenage kids. They, they do dumb things. But the mature bucks, they figured this all out. So you really have to make it realistic. Yeah, and the mature bucks, in my opinion, um, he's going to stay in the edge. 
he's not going to expose himself. Yep. He's going to observe, observe, observe. And it's like that, you know, you're on your food plot, right at dusk, that's when he walks out. And he's been there for half an hour. He's been there for 20 minutes observing, just doing my, his thing. My, personally, my favorite setup is if I can be in the woods 12 to 15 yards in my in my tree stand, I can put that decoy that's in heat just on the outer edge of the food plot, just into the food plot. Now I have a chance of taking that buck that's standing in there 20 yards, 15, 20 yards off the edge, like you're saying. I can I can quite often pull him out into that open edge because he knows one jump, he's back into safety too. He'll come out and check that dough, but he's not going to check one that's out in the middle of that food plot until it's dark. And then it's too late to hunt. So you're right. And so, folks, I know everybody can shoot 80 yards, 60 yards. 60 yards is a gimme now. I mean, when I started, 10 yards was a gimme. And at my crossbow, I can shoot it at 80 yards. But elk hunting, I have at 50. And for whitetails, I have it 25, 30 yards at max. Right. And I can shoot across all the way across the food plot if I have to. But you know, I restrict myself and I want people to start thinking, okay, reality of this, I'm going to limit myself because everybody says, oh, I can shoot 100 yards. Well, yeah, you can with today's stuff. I mean, right. all day long. You'd go to see guys at 3D tournaments and dang, but you get in the <laughs> woods, things change, blah, blah, blah. So do yourself a favor and dial it back to 30%, 30% of 80 it's 24 yards and it's a lot of fun to have deer 10 feet 10 yards <laughs> off your feet like i do <laughs> it, it is i love it i love it i've got to tell you a story uh hunting out back i was in a ground blind like you but i literally set up a ground blind along the edge of the little food plot well we had a south wind which is the worst wind and i should i should have never even went out but the deer come off the neighbor's property all does and fawns no bucks and what do they do? They go exactly downwind to eat all the acorns. And, and as soon as they start, and I had ever come now, what I did, I took the sting stick, opened a couple of them up, hung them in the window of the ground blind. And I'm sitting back there and I'm filming this, but I'm filming out in the food plot waiting for the buck to come. Well, the does go over there, the fawns go over there, and the does, you could tell they were kind of on edge because like I can smell, per, I can smell a human, but I also can smell deer. So okay i'm okay so they'd eat one fawn well that starts and starts walking right towards me and i'm thinking oh, okay that's kind of cool you know that's that's neat but it doesn't stop it keeps coming well now all of a sudden it's one step outside the window so as it's doing it i'm leaning back further, and further <laughs> from the it jumps through the window no this is Bruce Hutchin with a special message about my relationship with Burner.com. Burner HD is a non-lethal pistol that's available now on the web at Burner.com. If you go to the web and use my promo code, promo code AON2020, that's promo code AON2020, you're going to get a 10% discount on all burner product so again let's talk to your has a discount promo code promo code aon 2020 that's promo code aon 2020 burner product go check them out they're great the worst part is no. i didn't have the camera running it literally no. yeah it got his hind legs it jumps through the window and gets his hind legs caught outside kind of like going over a fence and it's it's kind of well i'm i'm losing it it realizes, uh, 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 it realizes, holy smokes, I'm not supposed to be here. Well, he, working with deer, what's the first thing I do? I just grabbed it. And I just picked it and turned it and pushed it back out the window. Uh, and it, uh, it went booking back over to mom. And it looked back. And it's like, and she's kind of looking in all the commotion. They, they end up taking off. But I thought, my goodness. Oh my God. How awesome that up until it got his head inside past the scent, you know, again, it's a fawn. It's it's like a one year old kid. Yeah. They don't know any better. But what an experience. I mean, I'm trying to protect the camera to be honest with you. So I just grabbed it and pushed it back out the window. But uh it 
don't, if that happens, be careful when you grab it because they can light you up and they can cut you up pretty bad. But I, thankfully, I know how to grab them and just yeah. kind of toss them back out. But that was the most amazing experience I've ever had with Evercom, literally. That, that was crazy. So fun times. <laughs> well, yeah. So let's talk about you have hundreds of people. You know, we still get about 20 minutes to go. Um, you got hundreds of people that call in testimonials. <laughs> you just gave a great, great one. But using Evercom and VS1, is it VS1 or DS1? DS1. Yep, DS1. DS1. Using that, let's let's give let's give the listeners some tips, um, you know, on on how how to use this and different winds and different setups. So just give us some tips. Do well, do a mini seminar. Okay, VS1. Understand vaginal secretion. That's VS, and then one is you either do a number one or number two. We literally were trying to figure out how do we explain or say that on national TV? That's how that name came about and we could do that. We can't say vaginal secretions on national TV because it freaks everybody out. But once we found out that the pheromones in the vaginal secretions, those secretions that are created that leak out and are mixed with the urine, that's why you see those does rubbing their legs all the time. They feel that and then they urinate a little bit and they mix it. Here's what we found, the alkaline in the urine stabilizes the vaginal secretions and doesn't allow them to rot. In fresh air, the vaginal secretions without the urine rots within 30 minutes, spoils, goes bad that fast. It's amazing how God created it, a perfect scenario that the dough feels it leaking out, she urinates a little bit, she mixes it on her legs, that drops on the ground, and that scent trail will stay for three to four days. So how do we use VS1? Well, there's no, a number stop, of ways. stop right there. If yeah. you've never seen a buck with his nose on the ground, now you know the reason he's yep. looking like a bird dog. He's looking like a, a, not a flusher. He's looking, he's tracking that pheasant through that cornfield, pick cornfield, and he's going back and forth, back and forth. That's exactly what he's tracking. Yep. It's that combination. But it, it took a number of years for us to figure out that's what actually was happening. So with that being said, we can create that same setup. So take the VS1 liquid or in the wax one, drag line. Now we have aerosol bombs. I really like those because you can actually just burst every four to five feet and you can create this natural scent trail of real product. That's the other nice thing about VS1 is in liquid form, we only have so much of it. When we're sold out, we're sold out because we can only collect so much. In the wax formula, it stays fresh and evaporates before it goes bad. So you just literally dab the wax. I wouldn't put it on your boots because you don't want it on you because you become a dough in heat then. So use a drag line. But you can literally create that real trail and then S-hook it in front of your stand. And when I say S-hook it, it means I go out and I'm going to loop I'm gonna loop and I'm gonna loop back. It gives you three different advantage points to be able to get a shot off with them not focusing on you. Pick it up and then go to your stand. Combo it with Evercom. So you have real deer there. I gotta stop you there. I've yeah. learned that I have to put my drag line in a plastic bag or it's gonna disperse. Yep. What I normally will do at the end, I will try to find a branch or a bush, something that I can shoot to, and I'll hang it there while I hunt, because that's still the strongest spot of scent. Most liquid scents, here's the problem with liquid scents. It's the strongest closest to the vehicle, and it gets the weakest closest to your tree stand. Well, when a buck smells that, if he, if he hits a line, he'll smell this way and he'll smell this way. And he can absolutely tell which way is the strongest. So if he hits a liquid scent line, and you haven't done it backwards, you're gonna send them towards your truck, not towards your tree stand. In the wax formula, it's an equal dispersion all the way through. Therefore, it's as strong going to your stand as it is to your truck, so you have a, a better, greater chance of him coming the right direction. Uh, people don't realize that with the liquid, that it gets less and less and less, unless you keep refreshing you know, every so far. And that's very hard because people try to sneak in, they get in quick, they want to get in quiet. I do the same thing. So I love that wax formula dispersal that keeps it evenly spread out. And one thing I found, I don't put 
to drag out until I'm closer to my stand than I am to my truck. However, that works for you. If the truck's only a hundred yards, okay, fifty yards. Yep. You know that's what I, I've I, learned. You know through yeah. trial, and because then they're going to pick it up, and there's only one way to come. Well, and, and, and most of us hunters know normally where the deer are going to come from. I mean, just like you said in your stand, you know where they're going to come from your left and where you're going to come from the right. I, if as long as you know those areas, you know where you're hunting. Make sure you cross those areas. So when they come out, they immediately hit that line. Don't don't give them that. Maybe they will. Maybe they won't. Go and hit those marks, but bring it all back and funnel it back into where your tree stand is at. So everything is coming. Will it take a little time to set up? Absolutely. It's hard in the dark in the morning. In the evenings, much, much easier to do. I mean, that's just the truth of it. So I, I do like evening hunts for that reason, because I can really set things up and, and I call it take my time setting up and getting the proper setup. In the morning, I'll get in, I'll, I'll set my stuff out, man, I get in the tree stand and, and kind of, it's more of a luck thing, but it's timing of them coming from the fields back into the woods at that point. Um, you know, Bruce, we, we did come out with the new unit scent fire. I don't know if you heard about that last year. No. Ele- electronic Why don't you tell us stuff? about it? Scentfire is the first ever electronic vaporizer of hunting scents. So literally it can be controlled by remote from your tree stand up to 40 yards away. So you can now vape Evercalm and VS1 scent into the air that follows the wind currents by remote. You can set it off, you can stop it, you can start it all by remote and it's an electronic scent dispenser and it uses three AA lithium batteries. It, so it's my new that's all up. I'm going to set that up. Tell me how I'm going to set that up. So what I what I do is literally, I will actually have spots where I'll have, we have little tripods or we have stakes in the ground. Um, you can screw it onto a camera trail arms, you know, that you can screw into the trees. Um, I'll put one off to each side. So I get two different wind currents. Let's say I've got a wind current coming. I'll put one for maybe out at 35 yards. I'll put one maybe at 15 yards. I might have VS1 at the right time of the season in one. I'll have Evercalm in another. And I can actually work both Scentfire units with one remote. I can set them off at the same time, or I can set them off individually so I can get different scents going through the air as often as I want or at least. And when the deer come in, I simply put them both on standby and they won't go off at all. Um, but it's, it's, a, it's the first electronic scent vaporizing unit. So it heats the liquid scent and vaporizes it into the air. Um, How long did it last? Um, lithium batteries in normal temperatures, normal fall temperatures, I've had last up to a week, week and a half. Now, super cold, you know, if you're getting below zero, it's kind of like when we do our filming, we put uh, disposable, you know, hand warmers around our battery packs on our cameras. I say the same thing, just take a couple of those, electrical tape them around it, and they'll last all morning and probably a full day. But the cartridges of scent, those will last about 30 hours of hunting time, a lot of time. Um, and we've actually changed it this year. We've opened up the portholes to actually get more scent being heated and vaporized out than what we originally did with the first set. We just found we needed more kaboom going out of it. But um, there's videos, there's YouTube videos uh, that you can go see that I, I've done and I've kind of explained and educated. But um, I have to be honest, that is my new favorite way of dispersing <laughs> scent. Now, I still use the stick point, the whack point, ever come always on my pant legs and my boots. I never walk into the woods. And that's from the truck moving in, uh, uh, just automatic. But when it comes to VS1 and, and kind of setting scenarios up, I'm having a ball with this new new dispensing system. I've been trying to figure it out for years, and then it was actually another company uh, that figured it out, and they came to us and said, hey, would you like to market this? I'm, my gosh, you just did what I've been trying to do. Um, but they had the technology to do it. But it's, it's like vaping. Uh, it just takes a liquid, our liquid scent, and vapes it out. But it's very, very effective. The deer will go right to it. Uh, it's, it's fun. So if somebody wants to reach out to Evercom, buy your product, get your product, talk to you, talk to your marketing uh, team, mm-hmm. got questions, how do they do that? 
they go right to conquestsense.com. Go to our website. You can put in questions. You can put in contact me. Uh, our people will always send those emails over to me. Emailing, get on there and just email is, is by far the best. If you want to order products, uh, of course, we're in all the major box stores. Um, we're, we, we, we've grown and we're very proud of that. Um, but if you want to order directly from the farm, you just go to conquestsense.com, get on there, put your order in, and we'll ship it right directly to your house. So here's the million dollar question. I'm going out elk hunting on the 8th. I've been on yep. Corey Jacobson's elk, elk 101. What's Hey, Corey, what's the best 10 days? Corey Jacobson, Randy Newberg, what's the best 10 days to hunt this year? Blah, 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 blah. Could we, I have, it actually starts the second, goes to the 30th. But just like the whitetail, um, the angle of the sun and the light hitting the iris of the deer kicks yep. the dominant doe into into estrus. If you don't know about that, folks, I'm not going to tell you. Doug's not going to tell you. Go read. Become a student. And that's one of my biggest pet peeves. Well, tell me, tell me. I said, no. Google is a wonderful thing. Go to Google and start learning about this stuff. I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell you. It, because once you learn it, then you can share it. If you're just gimme, 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 then I haven't done anything. It's the old, you know, I'll teach you to fish. Then you can fish the rest of your life. But you got to put some work to it first. That's my rant on that. So anyway, so I'm elk hunting. Have you ever tried this with elk? Oh, we have Your elk. product. We have elk. Huh? Yeah, we have it in liquid form and in wax form. And literally what it's designed to do is just make you smell like elk. So if they do happen to get downwind, you're not blowing them out. Um, I've done a couple things. One, I have literally covered myself up with the wax formula, you know, just wiped it all over me. What I like to do is pretty much you're always having a backpack because you got to carry. I actually take two stink sticks with the liquid elk herd and I fill them right up and I always hang them open. And so as I'm going, wherever my scent goes, that really strong elk smell goes along with it. Uh, the liquid is much stronger than the wax formula. So uh, if you set up in an area, let's say you're gonna get set up, I'll take the wax formula and wipe it out on some trees real quick just to kind of enhance that smell. Because if they're smelling other elk, they're not gonna blow out. It's if they smell you. And again, you're just masking your scent with the real deal. Um, so the, it's a combination of the wax and the liquid, but we only have the elk in Evercall milk. It's just the herd smell. Uh, we, we had the estrus, but the way elk hunters hunt, you really didn't have the ability to set anything up with an estrus scent. Um, we had BS, VSE is what we called it, was, you know, the true elk stuff, but uh, too difficult to use and it just, hunters wouldn't use it. So I'll have to get you some before you go because you, you're going to be, yeah. you know, you'd be amazed. Anyway, one caveat, folks. I've been... Thorfair River, drainage, Open Creek, Coyote Creek, which runs along the east side of Yellowstone Park. And we ended up calling in a grizzly to nine feet. <laughs> we smelled like elk. We smelled like cow elk. We were sounding like cow elk. Because my technique at elk hunters, if you're an elk hunter, I get up really early morning, three, four o'clock. I go to a ridge. I know where the elk should be. And I bugle. And if he comes back and hammers me, I just kick back. I get out of the area. Sometimes I just kick up my jet boil, have breakfast, you know, blah, 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 blah. And when the sun comes up, then I start hunting. Well, in this case, we did that. And I was with a guide in Wyoming. And we dropped into the canyon. <laughs> we smell like elk. And we're sounding like elk. And to that grizzly bear, we were elk. You you were and dinner. He came, <laughs> and he came, he, he came. So I'm going to give you a warning. If you're in grizzly country or even cat country, because I have called in cats also, yep. uh, mountain lions, be very careful. That's all I'm going to say. Now, and, and you very know, careful. That, that's a good thing to bring up because – our, even like our white tail scents work very well on mule deer and black tail deer. It, it's, it's all similar enough. 
But in New Mexico, we, I literally gave some of the Evercom to a guy. I, I had finished out and I left. I said, here, here's the Evercom, you know, just smear yourself up. Literally shot a mountain lion ready to lunge and, and attack him because the lion literally thought he was a deer. Um, and, and thank heavens it come from his left. He was right-handed and literally shot him at point blank range. So you do have to be careful when you're in grizzly bear country and, and, and mountain Predators. lion country. Because you yeah. are dinner. Yep. So please, folks, please remember that. And just, yeah, just just remember it, that. The hardest thing people, uh, it, people that haven't tried our scent products have a hard time understanding how real and fresh they are. That's the biggest thing. So to a predator, it's the easiest food supply at that point when they smell it. Um, you know, we don't get away as fast as a, a mule deer or a black tail deer, or a white tail or an elk. So, yeah, we don't have we don't have the radar. Our radar is not lunch yep. being lunch. We're we're yeah. the predator, and yeah. we don't have those skills. There's yeah. some people that do. You know, there's some people that are, are very attuned to that, but their jobs are different than yours and mine. That's for sure. In respect to your time, one more time, how do people get a hold of you? Go right to our website, conquestsense.com, and you can either put in a, an order or you can actually go there and actually leave me a message. If you have a question about something, uh, I'll either email you back or, or give you a phone call back. So it's, that's kind of what I do this time of year. So it's a lot of fun. And this is this is a busy time, and like I said, Doug and I have been trying to get together for a year to do this show, and it won't be the last. But on behalf of Let's Talk Deer, Doug Roberts, thank you so much. And you just continue to uh, do what you're doing because uh, everything I know about you, um, you and your wife, um, is, uh, is a blessing to the hunting industry. And I well, thank, thank you for you. that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.